What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chad's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, crunchy, bark, crispy, rendered, amazing, hot and fast smoked beef ribs. Coming up. About 10 years ago when I first moved down to Austin and discovered the local barbecue scene, I would frequent a lot of the local barbecue places. And one of my favorite spots to go is John Miller Meat Company, one of John Miller's several food trucks back in the day. And if you ever had his food, he cooks a little differently than a lot of the spots do nowadays. He tends to lean a little bit more towards the hot and fast as opposed to the low and slow. And to this day, one of my favorite bites in barbecue was the John Miller Beef Rib. They weren't nearly as tender and buttery soft as a lot of places are doing nowadays, but they were still nice and tender, they had an incredibly crunchy bark to it and the fat was just so well rendered. It almost had a bacon quality to it. You know, when the fat renders down and then crisps up. Oh, so good. So seeing how we're in the middle of breaking in my brand new reverse flow smoker that seems to cook a little bit hotter and faster, it seems like the perfect opportunity to try and recreate some hot and fast crispy beef ribs. And we're gonna do it two different ways. We're gonna do one full rack, three bone dino ribs, and then we're also gonna do some individually cut ones to see which cooks hotter and faster and which is better. So all that being said, that's what we're gonna do today. And it is going to be delicious. These are some beef ribs. Pat and dry. What we got here is a beautiful rack of dino ribs. Beautiful marbling on there, nice thick fat cap, as well as some of these individually cut ribs. I got all these from my friends over at Porter Road. More on them in a little bit. And these are all looking great. Nothing to do to these. The fat is trimmed pretty nicely. Everything is nicely squared up as per usual with Porter Road meats. But with these guys, I always leave this flap meat on top, which we do not want because that cooks up really weird. You can tell because I can pretty much just pull it off. So we're gonna take that off. Save that for a little pit snack. But other than that, I'm really not gonna do much. I might take this fat cap down a little bit. It's pretty heavy, but you know, we're cooking these hot and fast today. So I definitely wanna leave a good amount of fat on there. Help protect the meat a little bit. But really, that's all I'm gonna do, you know? It looks like the membrane is already removed on these. I would've left that on, but we'll see how it works out, you know? This kind of cook is all about being a little more rustic. Just trying to get some food on the table as opposed to trying to be too precise. So really all we need to do at this point is get these things seasoned up. So for these dino ribs, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little must, oh God, just because that membrane can be a little hard for the rub to stick to. And I'm going with my classic SPG. That's two parts pepper, one part salt, one half part granulated garlic, and just a nice even coating. Definitely don't have to season the underside, but you know, I think you might as well if you're here. Looks better at the end. Flip it over and you know what, while I'm here, we'll do a little mustard slather on top too. And just a nice heavy coating, folks. And as always, do not forget the sides, especially on beef ribs, rookie move. And as for these little guys, I think we're gonna do the same thing. Probably gonna skip the mustard on these and just go for it. Mostly because there's much less fat cap on these. Flip them over. Might wanna go a little bit less rub on these little guys because there's less meat. I assume these are from the chuck section. Then there we go, looking good. Just make sure we get all those sides and edges. And there we go, nicely seasoned up, looking good to me. I think it's time to fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. Got this pit on its way upward of 300, 325. And I think we're gonna shoot right down the middle today. Kind of away from where the smoke is turning up and still away from that direct heat to hopefully get a good amount of smoke and some nice crispy, fatty, rendery deliciousness. And then we'll take these guys and we'll pop them all right up here. Try cooking on a different spot today. Beautiful. So for this cook, we're gonna be cooking hot and fast like I keep saying. So we're gonna be rocking probably around 325, maybe 350. And because we got that baffle plate in there, this thing is gonna be cooking from all directions. So we'll just see how this goes. And if anything looks like it's burning, we'll deal with it, maybe get a spritz going or turn it down. But you know what? We're just gonna go with the flow today. So we'll check back in on these in a little bit. This video is brought to you by Porter Road. You know my friends at Porter Road by now, folks. They're an online butcher shop based out of Nashville, Tennessee. And they're my go-to for all different cuts of meat, whether that's the classic barbecue cuts like your pork butt, your dino ribs, briskets, pork belly. And of course, they've got all your classic steaks, your ribeye strips, Denver steaks are really good, as well as pork chops. Everything you'd expect from an online butcher shop. And they also carry a lot of the off cuts, things you're not gonna find at your local grocery store, like nicely trimmed beef cheeks, pig wings, hanger steaks, baseball steaks, 
steaks, and pretty much anything you'd be looking for. I've been cooking meat from Porter Road for years now, and the thing I love most about it is just the attention to detail and the quality of their product. All their beef is whole carcass dry aged, giving it a really nice beefy flavor. Their pork is so much better than anything you're gonna get at the grocery store because it's treated right, just like all the meat they use, locally sourced, and hand butchered in-house, meaning that every cut comes pristine, nice and perfectly trimmed, packaged up really well. You know, there's never any scraggly bits hanging off or bone dust from the bandsaw or anything like that. Whether it's beef, pork, chicken, or anything from their market like bone stock or their charcuterie. They've got some really good beef sticks and salamis. Porter Road only deals with high quality, humanely raised animals. And best of all, they ship right to your door. And if you go to their website, there's a curated list of all my favorite cuts. So if you're in the market for some high quality meat shipped right to you, go to porterroad.com using my link and save 15% off your order. Again, that's porterroad.com. I'll have a link in the description box of this video, taking you to Porter Road where you can pick and choose from anything you want, get some curated boxes, and get some great meat shipped right to you. Thank you, Porter Road. All right, folks, we're about three hours into this hot and fast beef rib cook, and let's see how these things are looking. Ooh, been cooking nice and toasty this whole time. Got some beautiful bark rendering going on. Definitely looking nice and crunchy. Oh, yeah. Ow. These little guys are looking kind of sad. That one jumped right off the bone, but looking pretty crispy, which is what we're after. Wow, nice and crunchy. Let's see how she's feeling. Oh, yeah, did you hear that? Just the sound of the bark. Yeah, I'd say this one's, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely feeling tender, reading 200 degrees internal. Feels great, looking nice and crispy. These little guys are looking kind of sad. Yeah, definitely feeling a little drier, but still probing nice and tender. I think I'm gonna wrap these little guys up in foil to try and soften them up. I don't know, I think these are a little too crusty, but this guy, that's looking real good. Yeah, I don't think these guys had enough fat on them, but we'll wrap them up. Maybe that'll help soften them up a little bit. Take that bone out of there. They're looking pretty crunchy. Bone side up. Talk about bone pullback. <laughs> Hopefully that'll help steam them up a little bit. All right, gonna let these go for another little bit. Although those guys will probably come off real soon. We'll check back in in like 30, 40 minutes. I chose a terrible day to do a hot and fast cook. It is so hot out here. Whew, I'm not ready for it. All right, I've made it to the Chud shop because I got some buddies in town. Joined as always by Evan Leroy, Andrew Wilkins. How's it going, boys? What's up? Hello. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. Evan Leroy, Leroy and Lewis on YouTube and all the socials. Drew Wilkins at Swine and Bovine. Yes, sir. Boys, it's been a minute. Last time you were here, we ate one ingredient sausage. Today, it's all about some hot and fast beef ribs. Are you ready? Born ready. If they taste as good as they smell, then we're in for a treat. All right, folks, as you can see, we've got a super crispy bark on these things. I don't know if you can hear it but I think we achieved that bacony, crispy crust we were going for. And I think it's time to see how they came out. What do you think, boys? Oh, God. It's begging to be eaten. <laughs> yeah. See this right there? That's what I was talking about with that crispy bacon style fat from the hot and fast beef rib that just is so savory. Ooh, let's get one more. Ooh, that's too tender. Yeah, definitely mess that one up a little bit, but sometimes that's what happens when you're cooking hot and fast, but still nice and tender, nice and juicy. And of course we got these guys, which I'm feeling a little less confident in. It's like a burn end on a stick. We'll take a bite out of these in just a moment. Fellas, mm -hmm. would you like to dive into some hot and fast reverse flow, crispy fat beef ribs? Yes, please. Let's do it. I would love it. to. Okay. Choose, choose your favorite. Just each of you pick one up. Crafting. So juicy. Dude, that like sandy, I mean, crunchy bark on top. Unbelievable. All right, boys. Ready? Let's do Cheers. it. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. I literally feel like I was transported back in time. I mean, it his words is probably like a little bit overcooked like this too, but it was perfectly imperfect. The way that it's just a little bit crusty, but just like easy enough that you can just like pull it off. That's what I love about his ribs is like, I took these up to a 210 plus, you know, I just waited till they probed tender, cooking really hot. And the thing is they get up to like 175, 180 in like an hour. It's and then you just gotta, you just gotta wait. But that extra heat and that extra time just makes that bark like, oh God translucent, just so crunchy. Oh, the flavor that you get from the top of it, I mean, it had crunchy bark, brisket, it had all, it's, but this is, this is different. I mean, it's definitely tender, but it's not that buttery, you know, craft barbecue, slice it with a fork kind of tender. No, no, this is in your face. I will eat this whole thing. Please do. I don't think I've ever eaten a whole beef rib in my entire life. 
Oh, no. <laughs> it's a fantastic bite, but it's the richest thing you'll ever eat in your entire life. And oh my God. I'm already halfway through this. <laughs> I think that's a benefit to this hot and fast method is that because it, everything renders out and goes crispy instead of being just melt in your mouth, yeah, that it's- It's the textural difference we're always after. It mixes up every bite so you don't, your palate doesn't get tired. <laughs> That just looks like the perfect slop. You know what I mean? It reminds me of the first bite I had at Jay yeah. Miller. It feels I, very when, old when, school. When I moved here, here. Yeah. Where it's tender, it's smoky, but it's kind of rusted. A little rough around the edges. Look at that yeah. though. The bark just peels off into this little wow. sheet. Well, it's funny, this is the same, you know, rack of beef ribs, same seasoning I would normally use, but I would cook it for nine hours yeah. plus. This is a three or four hour cook. And even though everything is the same except for that time period, it's a completely different eating experience. Mm. You guys want to try one of these little baby guys? They're not going to compare. I can tell just by poking at them, but. The fat doesn't stay in it. Right. Like there's a whole rack. This is the juiciest thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> these are a little dry. Yeah. Also, these didn't have as much of a fat cap. Oh, okay. And I think these are from the Chuck. Okay. So they're a little... Yeah, little, they're completely different. It's an, un, it's an unfair comparison. Yeah, it's a different cut. But even with the same rub, did they come off quicker? Yeah. Did not have enough time to mellow out for the I, long I, cook? I think they just cooked too quickly, where the meat was cooked, but the fat didn't have the same time to render. There was less fat. You know, I feel like the bone plays less of a part because every side is exposed, as opposed to these, where this act, the three acted like uh, mm -hmm. insulation on the bottom, yeah. which is especially the reverse flow is a necessary thing. I'll tell you what, if I ever opened my own barbecue joint, this is how I would do it because a nice three, four hour beef rib cook, dude. everyone's always complaining about pit space. This is, it's so nostalgic for me too, dude. Yeah. It just, it's, it hits, it just, I feel like I'm a kid again, eating at like the salt lick or something. It's obviously they didn't have this kind of quality, but this takes me back to what you think about when you have a memory about barbecue. Well, that's funny because that's the whole reason I made this yeah. is when I used to go to John Miller's place. Like it's only 10 years ago, yeah. but still that was the beginning of my barbecue journey. And I've been tr chasing this crispy beef rib dragon forever. Growing up in Arkansas, we were pork state. Ooh. So I never had anything like this to go off of. If we had brisket, it was served on a sandwich as an afterthought. And to come down to Texas and have my first bite of barbecue and then seeing and learning a little bit about the tradition of the crunchy bark and beef rib like this or brisket like this. It's incredibly good. Well, boys, thank you for joining me for Beef Rib Wednesday. What day is it? It's, Thursday. It's Beef Rib Day. It's Beef Rib Thursday. Day. Yeah. Thursday. All right, we're going to just devour the rest of this off camera. All right, John, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic, crispy, smoky, old school style, hot and fast beef ribs. Whether you get the full rack or the individually cut, they are both really great. The individually cut were a little bit drier, but they had a lot more seasoning and smoke on. So it's kind of like a burn end on a stick. But the full rack with the full fat cap really was the star of the show. It may not be as pretty and sliceable as the new school style of barbecue, but I highly recommend it, especially for a four hour cook. I mean, you saw how these guys were reacting to it. You know, these guys have been cooking beef ribs for years now now and this was something new that they weren't expecting and it's truly one of my favorite things to eat highly recommend it but all that being said if you enjoyed this video let me know by hitting that subscribe button let youtube know by dropping a like on this video if you give this recipe a try for yourself be sure to tag me on instagram at chud's barbecue i love to see what y'all are cooking big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace